Have you ever looked at the weeds in your yard and thought, I wonder if I could eat that? No? You might after today. Hopefully I don't fuck this up. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to identify and prepare weeds for, weeds from your yard for consumption. That's right, today we're eating weeds. Mustard grows in a well-drained environment and can pretty much be found anywhere where people are and where soil is being disturbed. It even grows in the Arctic Circle. Mustard greens are full of a lot of nutrition. Mustard contains vitamin A, vitamin B6, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K, and copper. The best time of year to pick um, wild mustard is in the spring when the leaves are at their most delicate. Today is July 1st, and so it's a little past spring. Um, so I've separated out the tender leaves from the older, larger, more mature leaves so that I'm gonna, so that I can use them for two different applications. The tender leaves I'll eat raw and then the uh, larger leaves I'll cook to take out a little of the bitterness. What you want to look for is the top four to six inches of the plant. The flowers and the leaves of that part are going to be the best to use in your kitchen. Wild mustard flowers can be placed in oil or vinegars to make them tasty and a slightly peppery. The flowers can also be tossed into salads or on top of pizza, pizzas for a really special look. The seeds for the mustard can also be dried and then ground up. Uh, you would most commonly find this in the grocery store aisle um, mu uh, as mustard powder. You can add the mustard powder with a little water to make a very spicy Russian mustard sauce. The flowering shoots of the plant can be cooked uh, similarly to asparagus. Pickled mustard greens are often referred to as takana in Japanese and Chinese cuisines, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. You pair them, you pick and wash and blanch to remove the slight bitter peppery flavor. Taken as a tea or in a capsule, mustard can actually alleviate inflammation and reduce headache pain. There are many, many uses for a wild mustard plant. So today I'm gonna to be making three dishes utilizing mustard plants that I pulled from my yard. The first recipe will be wild mustard salad, which will just be the leaves blanched and cooled and then sprinkled with sesame seeds and drizzled with sesame oil. The second one will be wild mustard sauteed with butter and shallots. And the third dish I'm going to make is going to be scrambled eggs with mustard greens. So let's get started in the kitchen. First things first, we're going to wash the leaves and flowers to get rid of any dirt, um, debris, and bugs. Because anytime you pick something from the garden, there's a good chance that it'll have a bug on it. Wild mustard dirt. can be identified by broccoli-like buds, yellow flowers with four petals that are not veined and six stamen, leaves that clasp around the stem and are toothless and or somewhat lobed, and they can grow up to six feet tall. Wild mustard is edible at all stages, with and without the yellow flowers, from its leaves to its flowers, seeds, pods called siliquies, and roots. The entire plant is edible. The younger the plant, the more delicate its leaves and the less bitter it will be. Mustard oil thickens and never fully dries, which makes it a good lubricant. The flowers of the plant can be used to create a semi-permanent pale yellow dye. 
Mustard plaster is crushed or ground mustard seed and water made into a paste applied herbicide up on a pe person's chest, joints, or other areas of pain. It opens up blood vessels, drawing out toxins and increasing blood flow. All functions that help reduce pain and swelling. You can actually buy commercially made mustard plasters online. It's a little peppery, very sesame oily. It kind of reminds me of like a cold sesame Asian dish that I've tried before. So that was a simple wild mustard green and sesame salad that you could have on the side of just about any dish. Most of the time, a weed is just con is just something that's considered um, not supposed to be growing in a place, and it can actually be a completely edible or even or even a welcome plant. Um, when I was living in Canada, the woman who owned the house tore up all the bluebell plants, all the bluebell flowers, because she said they were weeds. Um, and I guess they are weeds to some people, but they were very beautiful. So just because. It's a weed, doesn't mean it's not useful. Salt, salt, salt. Salt, salt, salt. Salt your water. Mmm. Mmm. Probably could use a little salt. I didn't salt it. I did salt the water for the greens, but I don't think it was in there long enough to absorb any of the actual salt. But it's really good. You would never guess that I just picked it out of the yard. A lot of shallot taste comes through. That's much better than the raw one, I have to say. That's very good. That's definitely a good breakfast. Thank you for watching my video today. Hopefully I've inspired you to eat the weeds from your yard. I am planning on doing another eating weeds from your garden episode with a different weed in the future. So please subscribe to this channel, share with your friends, like this video, and have a great day.